In this problem, we have to create a truth table for the statement. So we'll start by writing down all the possible truth values for P and Q. So we have P and Q. So the simplest case is when they're both true. So true, true. Another simple case is when exactly one of them is false. So we can do TF, and then we can switch it and do FT. And the very last case is when they're both false. Okay, so now we have to work our way up to get to this statement. So we've already got P and Q. That means we can actually work out um, that piece. So I'm going to go ahead and write P and Q. I'm going to put it in parentheses just for some little, little bit of clarity. And we need to get not P or Q. We need to get this statement here. So we first need to get P or Q. And then we need to look at the negation of that, so the negation of P or Q. And then now, finally, we can get the very last statement, which I'm going to write it over here. It's going to be um, P and Q. Or not P or Q. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just work each of these vertically. So P and Q. So P and Q is only going to be true when both P and Q are true. So if you look here on the left, um, the only time that happens is the first case here. So this is true. And all the other ones have at least one F. So they all become Fs. So F, F, F. P or Q is true if at least one of these is true, if at least one of P or Q is true. So in the first case, they're both true. So that's definitely good enough. Here you get TF, so you get a true, so it's true. Here you get FT, so you get a true, so it's true. And the last case are both false, so it's false. So the only time P or Q is false is when they're both false. Otherwise, it's true. For the negation of P or Q, all you have to do is look at the column for P or Q and then just switch the truth value. So here it's true, so it becomes false. Here it's true, so it becomes false. Here it's true, so it becomes false. Here it's false, so it becomes true. For the very last piece, we have to be a little bit careful. So we're looking at P and Q, which is right here. Whoops, not there. <laughs> which is right here. Let me use a different color for clarity. So right here, this yellow one. So P and Q. And we're looking at not P or Q. So that's this one here. Okay, so we're looking. Let me, put, let me box them in so we see so it's easier to look at. So we're looking at what's the columns that correspond to these yellow boxes. So P and Q and the negation of P or Q. And it's an or. So uh, it's true if at least one of them is true. So let's see. Uh, so true, false. So at least one of them is true. So it is true. Then we have false, false. So they're both false, so it's false. That's the only time the or is false. False, false. They're both false, so again, it's false. And the last case would be false, true. In this case, at least one of them is true, so it's true. Notice how I rewrote it in yellow, just to be really clear. Let's check. True, false is true. Good. False, false, that's false. False, false is false. False, true. We get a true, so we get true, right? That's how or works. Uh, pretty interesting problem. A little bit harder because of the, probably the way I wrote it. It would have been better maybe um, to write this one over here to flip these. It would have been easier to look at. But in any case, not, not too bad. I hope this video has been helpful.